Uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay, my name is Steven. Yeah. And today my topic is about the modeling of a virtual barrier test bench in Modelica. So my presentation will be organized from following six parts. First, I will give a very brief introduction of the research background and the research motivation. Then I will go into the modeling theory of a virtual barrier test bench and uh, provide some implementation details in Modelica. After that, I will give some examples, especially the simulation case to, for the model validation. And also I will give an application case on the transplanting, especially on the photodiagnosis. Uh, finally is the conclusion. So let's start from the introduction. First, as we know, motors have been widely used in many fields from chemical to machinery as to the reasons for motor failures, bearing accounts for nearly 40%. That's to say, bearing photo diagnosis is very important. Uh, at present, uh, as we know, the data driving methods have been widely used in bearing photo diagnosis, such as machine loading and deep loading. Uh, so the um, data driving methods can obtain satisfying results. However, they all rely on too much uh, data. However, in practice, uh, we only have very limited uh, experiment data. The idea is, uh, for example, in, in, if we train a neural network for photo analysis, the main idea is to get enough data from a bearing test bench. And then we train a network. After training, the network can be used for photo analysis and uh, remaining useful lifetime prediction. So our mm -hmm. idea is maybe we can provide uh, a virtual bearing test bench. And then we use the virtual bearing test bench to generate simulation data. And then we use the simulation data to train a neural network for photo analysis. After training, then we can use the network to uh, uh, achieve photo analysis in practical setup. So that's the, our motivation. And this let's use our research framework. We will start from the modeling of a test bearing. And first, we will model a bearing, especially the model defect, including different position, different shape, and different number. Besides the test bearing, we, we also consider the driving motor, the shaft, and the hydraulic loading system. Of course, we will also provide two controllers for both speed and the load control. And all these components um, will consist of the watch bearing test bench. And after that, we will use the watch test bench to analyze the acceleration signal from the bearing and to achieve bearing photodiagnosis. Okay, this is the research framework. So uh, let's come to the second part, the modeling. Um, first is the modeling of the bearing. Yeah. Here, we take the bearings as a system with five degrees. So then we can formulate the balance equations of this bearing system based on Newton's second law. Then, and the contacting force between the raceway and the balls can be calculated based on Hertz contact theory. Uh, of course, yeah, here, the deformation between the deformation of the balls can be and um, normally modeled as the relative di and displacement of the inner raceway and outer raceway. However, when there is a defect on the bearing, it will also uh, of if, um, affect the dips. So here we have added a item to model the defect dip dips that's caused by the defect. Yeah, that, that's the dead diff. So in the following, we will, cons we will focus on the modeling of the data DF. And this slide shows the first is the modeling of the defect position. As we know, normally the outer ring of the bearing is fixed and the inner ring will rotate at a rot um, shaft frequency. So if, we, if the defect happens on the outer ring, then the dips is normally fixed. And uh, that's to say it is constant. However, if the defect happens on the inner ring, then the dips will change with a shaft frequency uh, when the um, defect happens on the ball because the ball will contact with the inner ring and outer ring successively. Then uh, also uh, the, the curvature uh, radius of the inner ring and the outer ring is different. That's to say we have to consider um, independently. Okay, and uh, besides the defect position, we have also considered the defect, sh defect shape here. Based on the ratio of defect size and def defect widens and defect length, also the ratio um, between 
the defect size, uh, the full diameter to defect size. We have cons um, considered four different shapes. Let's just say the rectangle, half same wave uh, piecewise function one and piecewise function two. Uh, here we will, uh, let's, it depends on the, the, the ratio between the full diameter and the size and the defect size. So um, the last part is the modeling of the defect number. That's to say the multiple defects. Here we have considered, we have a matrix to define the parameters of the defect. That's to say the defect position, uh, the starting angular position of the defect and the spare angle of the defect. Also, uh, the dips caused by every defect was also modeled by a matrix. That's to say, for every model, for every ball in the bearing, then we can we can get the final uh, defect dips by element-wise addition in the column. So uh, until now, we have modeled the defect number, defect position, and the defect shape. The last uh, here, this slide shows the model of the joint module, uh, which includes the DC motor shaft, collect shaft, and the PLD controller. Uh, the DC motor uh, was achieved by a voltage balance equation and uh, torque balance equation. The shaft was modeled by a damper stiffness uh, system. And the PLD controller was used to guarantee the speed of the shaft. Uh, this is to use the hydraulic loading system, which includes actually two subsystems. One is the solar wave and the other is the hydraulic cylinder. Both of them are modeled by a second order system uh, here, and also it uh, consists of a PID controller to give or to control the, the, the force acting on the bearing. So um, just now we have modeled all the components and the, in the, the third part is the implementation in the Modelica. So this let's use the test bearing. Yeah, it has two inputs, uh, the omega speed load and and the one output, the acceleration, X. The users only need to define the parameters such as defect type, defect properties, material parameters, and uh, design parameters. Then they can use the test bearing model to simulate the bearing dynamics uh, and uh, define defects. So this that shows the parameter definition page for DC motor and shaft. And here is the hydraulic loading system. After all the components have been defined, we can put them together to form the virtual bearing test bench. Now, on the left, uh, it has shown the library for the whole bearing system. And uh, we provide, um, for, for example, the test bearing, driving system, and loading system. For the test bearing, we have provided three different cases. One for hair bearing, risk defect bearing, and board defect bearing. So that's to say, users can use uh, such a library to simulate the bearing either for non bearing or for defect bearing. And uh, once they defend the parameters and the uh, simulation case. So, this part, I will give some uh, simulation to validate our models. Here, we have defined the three different cases. In case A, we have defined um, three different defects on the outer inner and bore. In case B, we have defined two defects yeah, with different uh, angular interval. In case C, also we have simulated the model with uh, four different uh, defect shape. So in the following, uh, we will provide some more details. Here, this let's use the simulation results of the defect position. Yeah. On the left hand is the uh, acceleration response in time domain. And we can find that um, for the or the ball, we can get some defects uh, at a fixed interval. And the interval between every two peak equals to one over BPFO for the outgrid. Yeah, this is the same for inverse fault and ball fault. If we transform the signal from time domain to fixed domain by envelope spectrum, then we can also get some peaks at the fault characteristic frequency and its harmonics. Yeah. So that's to say all these um, results, both in time domain and fixed domain, are consistent with our theoretical values, you know, which confirms the effectiveness of this model.
Now, this slide shows the simulation of the multiple defects. Now, here we have defined two defects, um, but with different uh, agent interval. Yeah, based on the acceleration in time domain, we can find the time interval um, between the the peaks. That's to say, we can get the um, uh, the inf information of the of the number of defects yeah, from the peaks. Yeah, here you can find the the time interval tau. Yeah, and this label summarizes the values of the calculated or the theoretical value and, and the simulated value. Uh, they are very consistent. That's to say that our model can simulate the number of defects, the multiple defects. This shows the fixed shape. Yeah, here, um, if we focus on the dips of the bearing, yeah, we can find that uh, all these def all these defect shape has been reproduced by the acceleration signal. Now here, for example, the rectangular half same um, piece wise function one and piece wise function two. That's to say, um, based on our model, we can use it to simulate the bearing with different defect shape. Yeah, uh, once you have defined by our functions. Okay, that's the simulation results of our model. At last, I'd like to provide an application case based on our virtual bearing test bench. Here, yeah, our idea is yeah, we can use the virtual bearing test bench. Yeah, we have developed the Modelica. And then we use the virtual bearing test bench to generate simulation data. Yeah, to use the simulation data to train the neural network. Yeah, here we have used the convolutional neural network uh, to train the work. After the training, we can transfer the well-trained neural network to achieve first diagnosis on the bearing on the actual bearing test bench. Yeah, here we have used uh, because the Modelica model has been developed in open Modelica, and uh, our neural network has been developed in Python. So here we used the OM Python yeah, to call the open Modelica in Python uh, environment. So yeah, this is uh, this is our idea. And this let's use give more details. The idea is first we uh, develop the model, the bearing dynamics model in Modelica, and we um, developed a convolutional user network in Python. Yeah. Also, we have developed a graphic user interface in Python to call all these three models. And then we can get the fault classification accuracy. Yeah. Then I have defined uh, four cases. Uh, in case A, we use all ex experiment data. In case B, we use all the simulation data from our virtual bearing bench. Where in case C and case D, we use part simulation data from our uh, virtual test bench, some data from the um, experiment setup. Then we use all the data from three or from four cases to train our convolutional user network, and then. After the work has been trained, we transfer it to achieve photodiagnosis for the setup. This data shows the results. We can find that if we focus on case C, yeah, we find that the blue line is the, we just use the data from the experiment setup. The red line is we use part time part data from our simulation data and uh, part, part data from the experiment setup. We can find that the accuracy from the red line is much, it is hell, is always hell, the, the blue line. That's to say, our virtual bearing test bench can contribute as the um, improvement of the conclusion neural network training. Yeah. Also, uh, the same conclusion can be drawn from the figure, uh, from the case D. Yeah. The origin line is the photo classification accuracy only based on experiment data. And the green layer is based on the both uh, simulation data and uh, experiment data. It is always how the, the original. So this case- Sorry, may I ask you kindly to use only one more minute? Okay, okay, and this is the last slide, yeah. So we can come to the conclusion, yeah. So uh, first, uh, we have developed a virtual bearing test bench in Modelica, which includes uh, the ball bearing with defects. It includes the uh, different position, different length, and the different defect shape. 
box, so we have conclu con uh, considered the hydrogen loading system and the driving um, motor. As to as the significance of this work, I think we can first uh, it uh, can accurately accurately represent the building dynamics is with force. Uh, uh, the second point is it provides a platform as an alternative of experiment setup, and we can use it to support the development of data driving for the diagnosis algorithms. Okay, that's all for my presentation. And thank you. If you have any question, please contact me.